Which defensive lines are the best in the NFL entering 2023? What's going on, bottom line viewers? It's Mitch here of the BLV, here to give you my ranking for every defensive line in the NFL entering the 2023 NFL season. If that sounds good, don't forget to gronk spike the like button and subscribe to the channel for more NFL rankings all summer long. And if you enjoy these rankings, the place to go, the place to be, the place to support my journey as a creator is Patreon. So check out the link in the description and the pinned comment if you're interested in more BLV exclusive content. Patreon is the place to go where I'm discussing all of my lists across the board all summer long with a few different guests. Now, let's rank every D-line in the NFL. Let's go. At number 32, the worst defensive line in all of football is absolutely the Arizona Cardinals. If you wanna play a game with your friend to test their NFL knowledge, just simply ask them, can you name a single Arizona Cardinals defensive lineman? Because seriously, even I had a tough time naming these guys. There's a couple that maybe you know, like Carlos Watkins, who used to play for the Dallas Cowboys, Cameron Thomas, or possibly the rookie BJ Ojolari. Other than that, I don't know if you could really name any of these players. And even the players I named, as you know, are not the greatest in the world. This is a far cry from the defensive line that used to have Chandler Jones, that used to have J.J. Watt, that used to even have Marcus Golden. This D-line sucks. The second worst defensive line in the NFL at number 31, the Chicago Bears defensive line. The Chicago Bears did actually try to help their defensive line this offseason, signing Demarcus Walker from the Tennessee Titans, who might be their very best player now on the defensive line after a breakout year with the Titans last year. The ability to play inside or outside with great versatility, I would guess that he'll set the edge in this Eberflu scheme as the strong side defensive end. Andrew Billings had a very nice year for the Raiders last year. They also signed him as an underrated pickup. Travis Gibson is more the pass rusher for this unit. But overall, this is a unit full of no names. It's a no name defensive line with no real X factor or game changer. This wouldn't be a terrible unit if they just had one of those players, but they simply do not. The third worst defensive line in the NFL today at number 30, the Los Angeles Rams. Yeah, you heard that right. The defensive line with Aaron Donald is the third worst in football, at least in terms of entering this season based on the profile of the players around Aaron Donald. When Michael Hoyt is your second best player, arguably, on the defensive line, and 99% of people that, when I just said that name, thought I made it up, that suggests how bad this defensive line is. Aaron Donald allows you to be number 30, maybe number 29. But if you have not much else in terms of proven talent, when a Marquise Copeland might be your second best player on your defensive line, you might be in trouble. Now, the Rams have seemingly done a great job of inserting unknown players into their defensive scheme and getting the most out of them. And some of that has been because of the impact of Aaron Donald. But what if Aaron Donald isn't the same player anymore? Because last year, he really wasn't the same player. The Los Angeles Rams are in trouble. They're counting on a lot of young players like Byron Young, Kobe Turner to come in and produce right away. That's very hard to do, but we'll see what they're made of in 2023. At number 29, the Baltimore Ravens defensive line. That's right, the Baltimore Ravens. I know, it's a defensive list and they're this low on the list. You never hear that when it comes to the Baltimore Ravens. And they've certainly spent a lot of capital in upgrading this position with youth. 
But none of those players have really come through yet. Away. Through two seasons, not sure if he's a bust or not. He's a great athlete. Is he a great pass rusher? Stats would suggest no. David Ajabo, we didn't really see last year. What will he be in basically his rookie season? They do have some big guys. Michael Pierce back in the middle has proven to be a good player at moments in his career. Of course, Broderick Washington is a solid football player. Justin Matabuke is a pretty good pass rushing interior player. Tyus Bowser is probably their most proven pass rusher. But without Justin Houston, this defensive front just isn't really that proven at all. We'll see what they look like in 2023. It's going to be interesting because they decided to move on from the blitz-heavy Martindale scheme to more of a coverage-heavy scheme last year, but they don't have the pass rushers to really run it effectively. At number 28, the New Orleans Saints defensive line. And I'm convinced that Saints fans are living in the past because it feels like every list that I do, Saints fans complain about the spot of their team or their player and it's because a lot of the saints have regressed like cameron jordan for example he's still a good football player but he's not cameron jordan and when you look at this defensive line it doesn't have david onyamata anymore it doesn't have marcus davenport anymore it doesn't have trey hendrickson anymore it doesn't have all these good football players, even Shy Tuttle. It doesn't have him anymore. This is a completely revamped, new and fresh defensive line for the New Orleans Saints, full of young players, high priority prospects, Peyton Turner, who was a first round pick, Isaiah Foskey, who they just drafted in the second round, neither have proven to do anything yet, Brian Brzee is a first round pick. I wasn't the biggest fan of him coming out of the draft. So maybe there's some bias in terms of the prospects they've chosen. I'm not the biggest fan of, but of course it's my list. Overall though, can Nathan Shepard step up? Who's going to be that pass rusher off the edge that scares an offensive line? Is it Carl Granderson? Because it's not Cam Jordan anymore. I just don't think this defensive line is very good in terms of rushing the quarterback. I think they can still stop the run, but they're very one dimensional right now. At number 27, the Houston Texans defensive line. This is one of the most improved D-lines in football, spending one of the top picks in the draft on Will Anderson. Will Anderson, not my favorite edge player in this class, to be honest with you, but many people love this player and extremely highly regarded pass rusher coming out of Alabama. Can he make that big time rookie impact and be their big time pass rusher that D'Amico Ryans is searching for to replicate Nick Boza in the San Francisco 49er front. I really like the Sheldon Rankins move. Sheldon Rankins had a really good bounce back season last year for the Jets. Solid run defender, good all around interior player. They already have Jerry Hughes who had a really good year last year with about nine sacks. And a player like Greenard is not bad as a pass rusher as well. Malik Collins is a very underrated defensive tackle in this league. They just signed him long term. Also, Roy Lopez, Chase Winovich, a few different depth players that I don't mind in different roles. So the Houston Texans have greatly improved their depth, greatly improved the top of their defensive line, and definitely have a lot more upside than last year. At number 26, the Detroit Lions defensive line. The Detroit Lions defensive line is really tricky. Super tricky. I could see this unit having a breakout year. They certainly still have a lot of young players that have room to grow. But I also feel like they didn't improve this unit enough. They certainly struggled at times last year versus the run. They also struggled to have other contributors getting to the quarterback other than Aiden Hutchinson. Aiden Hutchinson should see a big, big year this year. His second year in the league really took off over the last half of last season. But otherwise, I struggle to see a ton of upside here. McNeil is a pretty good run defender and run stuffer. And James Houston is a good designated pass rusher. Can he maybe get more involved as a regular player on this defensive line? 
Maybe they're expecting more out of John Kaminsky this year, or maybe more likely Josh Pascal this year as the strong side end. But I don't know. I just don't see some of the upside that maybe the fan base sees with this unit. I think they're an okay unit. They're certainly passable, but they're not going to win you a lot of games. At number 25, the Seattle Seahawks defensive line. The Seattle Seahawks certainly did their thing in terms of improving this unit, and I'm actually surprised they didn't try to improve it even more than they did in the draft. They actually went with a corner over a defensive lineman where I thought they were just going to continue to jump on a defensive lineman. But they did go with Derek Hall later in the second round, which made a lot of sense. So they added another young player, Boye Mafe. They also added last year from the draft. So two young players that maybe could help the depth of this unit. We saw Nwosu have a breakout season last year. He's a perfect fit for what they do with their creativity blitz-wise. Draymond Jones is going to add a much-needed breath of fresh air to the interior defensive line. Jerron Reed can also rush the quarterback. And Daryl Taylor also had nine sacks. So they have two players that had nine plus sacks. They have a proven interior pass rusher, a better duo on the inside, and good upside on the bench. I like this unit entering the year. They're not going to dominate games, but they certainly could be much improved from 2022. At number 24, the Atlanta Falcons defensive line. The Atlanta Falcons another much improved defensive line especially on the interior and atlanta went the way of proven veterans through free agency david onyamata who's already familiar with this defensive scheme the new orleans scheme brought to atlanta this year big time interior force especially as a run defender calais campbell future hall of famer still playing at a high level maybe not peak but high level with edge or interior flexibility we know what Grady Jarrett can do but what could he possibly do with actual help beside him this year which is interesting Bud Dupree another proven vet on the edge of course they have Lorenzo Carter who's their do-it-all piece who plays like every snap of the game and they've got other players like Eddie Goldman coming back to the NFL this year so the Atlanta Falcons don't have that like go-to edge rusher just get to the quarterback guy but they're going to be really good against the run. They're going to be able to push the pocket exceptionally well. And they have good athletes that are really good in blitzing scenarios. So I think Atlanta will be a pretty good front this year. At number 23, the Carolina Panthers defensive line. The Carolina Panthers defensive line is one of these units that I felt was going to rank a lot higher. But when you actually look into their defensive line, They don't have much outside of the duo of Derek Brown on the inside and Brian Burns on the outside. Now that's a dynamic duo and I love it because it's inside outside. You got a stud on the inside demanding double teams, especially in the run game. And then you have a guy that's just one of the best pure pass rushers in all of football and Brian Burns on the outside that beats you with quickness while Brown beats you with power. So it's a great combination. Everyone else is set up to have success outside of these guys, no matter who they are. Now, the other guys are like Shai Tuttle, who they signed this offseason, who isn't bad. He's a starter in this league, but he's not an exceptional third defensive lineman, like your third go-to guy. Deshaun Williams is just a vet, get-by type of guy. They got guys like Henry Anderson, who's been around the NFL. Yeter Gos Matos hasn't broken out yet, so we're still waiting for that. They don't have that other piece on the edge like they used to with Hassan Reddick. If they did, they'd be in the top 10, but they don't have that piece, and that's kind of what's missing for me. At number 22, the Las Vegas Raiders defensive line. For the Raiders, it's really all about the trio on the edge. That will determine their success in 2023. Max Crosby, who's one of the five best edge rushers in football, an absolute stud who sets the tone for this defense in the run and the pass game. Chandler Jones, who's, in my opinion, a Hall of Famer, one of the best sack artists of the last 10 years. He did not have his best season last year, but I still believe in him to have success this year. And Tyree Wilson, 
who was my favorite edge player in this class. So those three players alone could be amazing. If they all play well, this defensive line is a lot better than where I put them on this list. But based on last year, I can't put them too high because they weren't very good. They have okay interior, you know, not the best. Nichols, we'll see what he does this year in his second year with the Raiders. And actually, Jerry Tillery had some upside last year. Played pretty well in this system. And then they got some rookies behind that. So we'll see what those guys are made of, like Byron Young out of Alabama who could play inside or outside. The Raiders certainly have a ton of upside if that edge trio hits in 2023. At number 21, the Minnesota Vikings defensive line. The Vikings defensive line would have ranked a lot higher on this list if Zadarius Smith would have stuck around on this roster but they're still not that bad. When you talk about Marcus Davenport coming in and signing a one-year contract, I bet you forgot about that one. Marcus Davenport has shown that, man, he has the skills, the athleticism to be a really good player in this league against the run, in the pass game as a pass rusher. Opposite Daniil Hunter, this guy could really, really take off because he's a similar type of player. Hunter takes him under his wing. This guy could absolutely explode this season. Then you have a Harrison Phillips on the interior, who's an underrated player, a good run stuffer, and a couple others like Lowry from the Packers. So the Vikings, I do think, have a little bit of an underrated unit because everyone thinks about, oh, Zadarius Smith is gone. They think about, even though he's a linebacker, Eric Kendricks left, and of course, Dalvin Tomlinson is gone. So everyone thinks they're kind of done at this position. But no, they actually have actually a younger defensive front that may be more athletic that should perform with Brian Flores in 2023. At number 20, the Denver Broncos defensive line. The Denver Broncos defensive line, before they signed Frank Clark, I was starting to be concerned. But now that they added Frank Clark, a proven veteran who can be a good number two pass rusher on the edge, which is exactly what he's going to be for Randy Gregory, who didn't play a lot last year, of course, due to injury. If Randy Gregory is playing the way we know he can, then Frank Clark's gonna have success on the opposite side. Then you have an awesome run defender in DJ Jones, joined by Zach Allen, who's one of my favorite pass rushing, interior, young, up and coming players. And he's great in this system under Vance Joseph. Then you talk about Vance Joseph, who's just going to make these players better all around. Baron Browning's a really nice, versatile piece as well. And Mike Purcell is a pretty good player on the inside as that third interior player. So collectively, this is a really good front four. And then a couple nice depth pieces who can contribute in a variety of ways. I like the mix of young players with upside and proven veterans with different skill sets for the Broncos in 2023. At number 19, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Jacksonville comes in at number 19 with a lot of upside to improve this position in 2023, dependent on the second season, the sophomore year of Trayvon Walker. If Walker takes a significant step forward as an overall player for this front, then this D-line could really be good because the rest of the starters played well last year. Josh Allen is playing at his best, his best football I've ever seen him play, and he's one of the most versatile edge players in all of football. Hamilton is a really good up-and-coming interior player that not a lot of people know about. And my guy, Roy Robertson Harris, is only getting better, especially late last season where he took over the game against the Chargers. This is a unit that I really like the starting for. They've got a lot of youth and I think juice because of it. Not the greatest depth in the world. I think the interior depth is solid. The edge depth, not the greatest. But I still believe that this unit, because of their upside, belongs in the top 20. At number 18, the Indianapolis Colts defensive line. The Colts defensive line really ranks this high for me because of their interior duo. DeForest Buckner and Grover Stewart. Those are the two players that control the front versus every offensive line that they play. 
DeForest Buckner, one of the most complete defensive linemen, edge or interior in the entire NFL, an intimidating force. Grover Stewart, one of the best run defenders in all of football, regardless of position. Their edge isn't what it used to be. Quiddy Pay is a good athlete, has had some moments in the NFL, but has not proven to be a number one edge player just yet. Samson Epicam is actually one of my favorite underrated players coming from San Francisco. He's going to be a very reliable edge setter for the Colts. And then they got a couple different players that can come in and mix into the rotation. Taven Bryan was a nice pickup this offseason, played pretty well for Cleveland, and will be inserted to a similar scheme under Gus Bradley, which is the final point. Gus Bradley always has defensive lines playing well. That's his biggest asset, and he finds the skill set that fits within his scheme. I believe that the Colts will be pretty solid, not great, in 2023. At number 17, the Los Angeles Chargers defensive line. Many of you are probably going to say, whoa, this seems low for a team that has Joey Boza and Khalil Mack, the big names, of course. But who else do they really have? Okay, I'll give you Morgan Fox, of course. He was on my top 32 interior defensive lineman. But we've seen this unit get ran on consistently year after year, season after season. So some of that is cohesion, scheme, how these players fit within the scheme and how they're coached, obviously. On top of that, Joey Boza, Khalil Mack, proven to get banged up, Khalil Mack getting older, Joey Boza getting older. They both maybe could miss some games, which I definitely took into account. When they're at their peak and they're playing and they're healthy, yeah, they can be a really good pass rushing unit, top 10. But as an overall collective run defense pass rush unit, I think they belong about here. Sebastian Joseph Day, a little bit of a disappointment. Austin Johnson has been kind of as advertised. I like them to bring back Kyle Van Noy if possible for the depth purpose. But they did bring in a young rookie as well with a pretty high pick. So we'll see how the Chargers look. If they can stay healthy, they may be better than this spot in 2023. At number 16, the Kansas City Chiefs defensive line. Kansas City Chiefs defensive line is probably a little bit underrated because the rest of the team gets so much attention. But I felt they were a big reason they won the Super Bowl. When you really think about it, their ability to stop the run and force Jalen Hurts into being a passer was a huge reason they won because they made the Eagles a little bit more one-dimensional. That allowed them to get a stop or two and make a play or two a turnover or two and the Chiefs I think maybe improve their defensive line possibly right they did add a first round pick late in my guy Felix don't make me pronounce the rest of his name please but he's probably gonna play a rotation role which I like for rookie players because they can show their flashes of athleticism and Spagnolo can be creative in where he aligns him and puts him and places him in their scheme Charles Omenihue is a similar player where he can play inside or outside, played very well for San Francisco last year. My only worry is, did he play well because he was in San Francisco? That's my only question. Now, no more playoff Frank Clark, but Frank Clark in the regular season hasn't been the greatest player. It's all been about Chris Jones. That's another reason they're here because Chris Jones is just that good, okay? Period, end of story. But also expect George Karloftis to have a big year two. I really like him as a player. So the Chiefs are at number 16, right in the middle of the NFL. At number 15, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defensive line. The Bucks defensive line in 2022, of course, was missing one of their key components in Shaq Barrett for a majority of the season. And they really struggled to get after the quarterback without blitzing. On top of that, they don't really look the same on paper. They added a first round pick in Kalijah Kansi, who's a super athlete, and I think will right away improve their athleticism, speed, quickness, and pop from the interior of the defensive line. Greg Gaines is also a super underrated pickup from the Los Angeles Rams as a veteran who can play right away in a majority of the different positions and roles on the inside. And then Logan Hall is a first rounder or early second rounder from last year who can 
hopefully take a step forward. Joe Tryon, they're still waiting to get the most out of him. He's shown flashes, but hasn't been consistent. And Anthony Nelson, very solid run defender on the edge to be that third rotation player. So they have a lot of depth. They have a lot more upside thanks to the first round pick and Shaq coming back. And of course, they have Vita Vea. So the Bucks rank at number 15. At number 14, the New York G-Men. The Giants defensive line, I think is a little underrated just because of how good that interior duo between Dexter Lawrence and Leonard Williams can be. Dexter Lawrence was absolutely phenomenal last year and he was destroying numerous offensive lines. He commands attention. And when you put that attention on Dexter Lawrence, that's gonna open up opportunity for Leonard Williams to go to work. We know what he can do at his best. And then if Thibodeau can get going in his second year, he showed some ability in year one to make some plays, strip sacks. And if he can just refine his game string together some more moves as a pass rusher. I think he could be a real force on the edge. Ojalari also has a lot of upside, a player that didn't play a lot last year, but should be a starter this year. And then I really like Ashawn Robinson as a pickup, even Nunez Roches from the Tampa Bay Bucks as a big run defender as well, where they did need help. So I think the Giants have improved their unit on top of having an awesome interior duo this, to me, is one of the better top half units in football. At number 13, the Green Bay Packers defensive line. The Packers defensive line will get a big boost this season, and I don't think they'll look the same as last year because Rashawn Gary is back. You know how much I love Rashawn Gary. He's one of the 10 best edge players in football. He's awesome against the run. He's super powerful, can set the edge. And of course, he's a monster as a pass rusher as well. Preston Smith is still there on the other side. And then they drafted a high first round pick in Lucas Van Ness, who could play inside or outside, who also showcases a ton of power. We know what Kenny Clark can do at his best, an interior force. And then Devontae Wyatt is also a first round pick from 2022, who's gonna get more opportunity this year. And Slayton's a big run defender. So I actually think the Packers unit is kind of underrated. And depending on what Wyatt can do, depending on how Van Ness looks as a rookie, this unit could actually be top 10 in 2023. At number 12, the Washington Commanders defensive line. The Commanders have an awesome starting four players on paper. From Montez Sweat to Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne, and Chase Young, this is one of the best starting four in football. If Chase Young can be Chase Young, this unit, even without depth, could be a top 10 unit. But my question is, is the depth any good? Because they don't have a lot of proven players behind their starters because they've paid so much money to Payne, to Allen. It's hard to have quality depth. And in the modern NFL, you kind of have to have the line change. So while I do love Payne, I do absolutely adore Jonathan Allen, and I think Montez Sweat is a stud, I just can't rank them any higher than where they're at, even if they're really good as pass rushers, really good as run defenders, and set the tone for this defense. At number 11, the Buffalo Bills defensive line. The Bills defensive line is a unit that has always been quantity over quality, but I do feel they have quite a bit of quality entering 2023. Depending on if Von Miller can come back from his injury and be Von Miller, then this unit could be even better than where I've put them here. I am a little concerned with an older player like Von Miller, an older player like Daquan Jones being in that starting four and being relied upon. But I love, love the pickup of Leonard Floyd to help kind of lessen that pressure of Von Miller. And even Gregory Rousseau, maybe he could be their go-to pass rusher if Von Miller doesn't step up this season. And then Ed Oliver has played very well the last couple of years. He's not exceptional. He's not elite, but he's very solid. And they even have depth behind that, like Jordan Phillips, who I like as well as a bigger body on the inside and a couple other names. They've spent a lot of assets and picks on this position over the last couple of years. So I think this defensive line is good. 
I am not sure what the upside is. I'm not sure how good they can be. It's like if Von Miller's at his peak, if Leonard Floyd all the sudden's at his peak, if Ed Oliver plays as good as he ever has, if Gregory Rousseau plays as good as he ever has, maybe this unit's top five in the league this year. It's just really hard to know based on all the different X factors and question marks that this unit does have. Entering the top 10 at number 10, the Miami Dolphins defensive line. The Miami Dolphins defensive line is low-key exceptional, and I think they have better depth than people really talk about because when you're talking about Emmanuel Ogba as your third edge rusher, that's a pretty good unit. You know, Emmanuel Ogba was really good like two years ago. Didn't have his greatest year last year. Maybe that was because Brian Flores left the team and all that, but I feel like this is a good unit. You look at that starting four, I mean, they spent to get Bradley Chubb, who's a good player, a good player. Jalen Phillips is one of the best pass rushers in football as soon as this year. Then you have Zach Sealer, who's a really good run defender and kind of underrated pass rusher. We know that Christian Wilkins is an absolute stud. That's their starting four, okay? Then you've got Davis, who's a pretty good run defender. Ogba as well. And pieces beyond that, the Miami Dolphins have it all. They can blitz with athletes. They can rush from the inside. Even Van Ginkle's not a bad player as well. I forgot about him. The Miami Dolphins don't sleep on their front. A lot of people talking about that secondary. I actually think the front might be better than the secondary. At number nine, the Pittsburgh Steelers defensive line. The Pittsburgh Steelers always have a good defensive line, and a lot of that has to do with their coaching, their scheme, the way that they scheme things up to help those players up front. But when you're talking about TJ Watt, arguably the best edge player in the NFL at his peak, can do it all, is the description in the dictionary of what an edge player is. Then you have Alex Highsmith on the other side with his six spin move, one of the best number twos in the league. Cameron Hayward, still playing at an all-time high level. Then you've got really good players other than that, like Marcus Golden. They signed him off the street. Nice third edge rusher for a little quality depth. They spent a second round pick on an interior player. Larry Ogunjobi played well for them last year, and he's going to be their third player as that interior player, or their second player, depending on what they do with the rookie. But regardless, the Pittsburgh Steelers have an awesome front four and good depth. I think this defensive line is actually better than the last couple of years. So expect them to perform in 2023 as long as TJ Watt stays on the field. At number eight, the Cleveland Browns defensive line. The Cleveland Browns, I think, could be one of the most improved pass rush units in all of football and maybe even run defense units and it's really about the coaching more than anything. Before we even get to the additions, it's about the coaching. Jim Schwartz is an exceptional defensive line coach. We've seen it in Detroit. We saw it in Philadelphia. When he has talented players to work with on the defensive line, he has a good defense. That's what it's really all about. And when you have Miles Garrett, that's a good starting point. But then you add Zadarius Smith, as an awesome number two player who can do a lot of different things at a high level. Dalvin Tomlinson as a big nose tackle to take up space. And then Agbania as like a third rotation pass rush, designated pass rush role, which I thought was an exceptional signing for that role specifically. I think the Cleveland Browns have one of the most underrated defensive lines. I think they're going to have a huge year this year. And it's not just about the players, it's about the coaching as well. At number seven, the Cincinnati Bengals defensive line. I just really love this unit. I just have a crush on it. Something about it. I love the duo of Reader and BJ Hill. It's just really hard to run on these guys in January, in December. It's just hard to get a yard. Like, they're so big, they take up so much space, and they're exceptional in the run game. And then you've got Trey Hendrickson, who's a workhorse, who's an awesome pass rusher. You have Sam Hubbard, who can do it all, who's a great edge setter. You add Miles Murphy, a first-round pick with a ton of upside. 
Osai is a player I really, really like. I think in year two, really for him, he could have a huge year. The only area I think there may be a little bit lesser than others is interior depth. But other than that, man, this is the best defensive line that Big Lou has ever had in Cincinnati. I think they're going to be awesome in 2023. At number six, the Tennessee Titans defensive line. I feel like this is a unit that not a lot of people expected to see in the top 10. But when you really think about who is on this defensive front, it's really good. Like they were the best run defense in all of football. So that matters a lot to me last year. That was without Harold Landry. That was without Arden Key, right? So you have those two players on the edge. Arden Key is an awesome player that doesn't get a lot of credit. Performed in San Francisco, performed in Jacksonville last year as like this move around designated pass rush type player. He's so athletic. You can play him inside, off ball, outside. Then you have Jeffrey Simmons, who's an absolute freak monster. Tier Tart, who's one of the best nose tackles in football. Danico Autry, who could play inside or outside. I mean, this is an exceptional defensive line with like four awesome players with a really good scheme on top of it. Entering the top five defensive lines in the NFL at number five, I have the New England Patriots defensive line. They really took off last year because Josh Uche really took a huge step forward as a pass rusher. And for a lot of people, this guy is the best, biggest, up and coming, young pass rusher in all of football. By some people has been compared to Vaughn Miller because of his ability to bend around the corner and get to the quarterback with freakish speed and quickness. Josh Uche is one of the best pass rushers in football. Matt Judon is one of the best overall edge players in football. The ability to drop back in coverage, chase down quarterbacks, play the run game, rush the passer. He does it all. Christian Barmore has exceptional upside as an interior player. And when he's on the field, he's one of the best pass rushers on the inside in football. Lawrence Guy is a really solid veteran player at defensive tackle who we know what he can do in big games. And then you have a Devon Godshaw, who's just a big nose tackle who takes up space in the running game. Dietrich Wise is a super underrated player who had his best season of his career last year as an edge or inside player. They add White in the draft as well, a second round pick, who's also a super powerful edge player. So this unit just has a ton of depth. Anthony Jennings is another player who's kind of like a linebacker slash an edge player. And they could do a ton of different things with a ton of different versatile skill sets and a lot of different athletes. The New England Patriots might be the most underrated defensive line because we don't really think of it, but they've got exceptional players across the board and they will dominate 2023. At number four, the New York Jets defensive line. You could argue the Jets defensive line could be the best in the NFL this year. I'm not saying that, like, I don't think that's a crazy thought at all. The Jets defensive line is absolutely loaded and they have layers upon layers upon layers of players that can get to the quarterback, that can stop the run. And you could argue they're the most complete defensive line when it comes to being able to do both at a high level. Quinnen Williams is an absolute problem. John Franklin Myers is one of the most unique defensive linemen in all of football. Of course, a lot of people know what Carl Lawson can do at his peak as an edge player. Didn't have his best year last year, but at his peak can play really well. They have two first round pick edge players that don't really even play a lot. Jermaine Johnson, who had actually kind of an underrated rookie year. Will McDonald, who I love coming out of this draft class as a pass rusher, he could really help them in designated pass rush scenarios. They added Quinton Jefferson. They added Al Woods, two players from Seattle that know this system and know Robert Sala's defense very, very well. Clemens is a really good player that nobody knows. Huff is a really good player that nobody knows. Like, look at this defensive line, man. They've got a line change and a half working for the New York Jets <laughs> in 2023. At number three, the third best defensive line in the NFL is the Dallas Cowboys. 
The Dallas Cowboys defensive line maybe has the most potential out of all of the elite units because they have the most young players that maybe could take off this year. When you're talking about that interior duo, I think that is where the upside exists. We don't know what Mozzie Smith is yet, but as a first round pick, he could be a huge, huge asset to this team because they haven't really had that space eater on the defensive line the way that he can be. And then he also has very high upside with athletic traits that guys of that size don't really offer. We know what Micah Parsons can do, and he could have his best season of his career this year in year three. Demarcus Lawrence, of course, is an absolute really, really good player. Dante Fowler kind of rejuvenated last year. Dorrance Armstrong is a awesome third edge player. And you got guys like Sam Williams, who's a second round pick. He showed pretty well last year. Like this defensive line is very deep, especially at the edge position and has a lot of potential on the inside at the defensive tackle position in an area where they haven't been as good as of late, but are better than ever right now. So Dallas has a really good defensive line, very fast unit this season. At number two, the San Francisco 49ers defensive line. And you could make the argument this is the best defensive line in the NFL. San Francisco, in terms of a starting four, might be the best in the NFL. Nick Boza is an absolute stud. I don't really need to talk about how good he is. I already did that in another video. Javon Hargrave might be the best pass rushing defensive tackle in the NFL, not named Chris Jones. They added him to this unit. <laughs> Eric Armstead is one of the most versatile defensive linemen in all of football. So you got the best edge player in the league. You've got one of the top three interior defensive line pass rushing players in the NFL. You have the most versatile defensive lineman maybe in the NFL. Then you have a really high upside athlete in Drake Jackson, a proven veteran in Kerry Hyder, a former first round pick in Javon Kinlaw, a former first round pick in Colin Farrell. So there's a lot of depth. There's a lot of players. There's a lot of great players. And the starting unit is absolutely phenomenal. The Niners, maybe their only downside is that they're shifting defensive coordinators this year. But other than that, this is a great unit. But the number one defensive line in the NFL entering 2023, it has to be the Philadelphia Eagles. The Philadelphia Eagles had a historic season in 2022. And to not put them number one, I think would be a little disrespectful. Even if you think they might take a step back, which is probably possible, it's still kind of disrespectful. Because when you look at the talent, it's outrageous. Like, it is outrageous. They have future Hall of Famer Fletcher Cox, who's a backup to Jordan Davis and to now Jalen Carter. Now, both of those players are a little unproven, but judging off of my study of their game from college, they should be good players. And they complement each other, as we know, exceptionally well. Brandon Graham is still a great player capable of 10 plus sacks. And he is like the third best edge player on the team. Josh Sweat is really good. Really good Ben. Get around the corner, get to the quarterback ability. Hassan Reddick, one of the best pass rushers in football. And then you talk about Derek Barnett comes back this year and he didn't play last year, right? So there's so many pieces that you forget about them. Like I'm forgetting about some right now. So the Philadelphia Eagles are awesome. And there's no debate that I think they belong at number one, even if you think they might get a little worse this year. Those are my defensive line rankings entering 2023. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, Gronk, spike the like button and subscribe for more NFL lists and rankings just like this. Also, don't forget to check out Patreon. If you want to support the BLV, that is the place to go. It's Mitch. Thanks for watching. Peace.